Hello, my name is Rishi Gandhi, and I'm a filmmaker. I've worn many hats, such as director, editor, DP, and colorist. I've oftentimes had to perform all these functions on the same project. I've worked on documentary, commercials, and narrative film. On independent productions, I often end up shaping the imagery on my own. Such was the case on my indie short horror film, Mater Mortis. Mater Mortis is a drama examining family illness through the lens of horror. When I was still in the writing stage, I conceived of there being two different looks in the film, one for scenes in the past and one for scenes in the present. I opted for a more desaturated look for scenes in the present to reflect the emotions the protagonist was dealing with. Flashback scenes would be brighter and lean towards a nostalgic feeling. To help me speed through the initial phase of color grading, I opted to test out Color Lab right on this project. Okay, starting out we have Resolve open and we have a sequence from Mater Mortis open in this timeline. And what we're going to do first is just do our first bit of work in Color Lab. So in the Color Lab interface, I just hit Resolve Fetch and it's going to bring that exact timeline in here. And the really cool thing is I have this little camera profile IDT pop up and all I have to do is pick the camera profile for the type of camera that I shot. And in this case, I shot Panasonic. I shot specifically on a GH5. Color Lab by default goes with V-Log. When I worked on this project, I actually ended up working in uh, RE Log C color space. And granted, Log C and V Log are kind of close to each other, but I felt I was, for my own creative purposes, I felt I was I was hitting the look that I wanted a little sooner using Log C, and I just really, really loved the look I was getting in that space. So I've opted to just keep everything in Log C and work in that space. So now I just hit done and we get to work. We have these two shots here that are in a dream sequence. We have this little boy looking at some water. It's very intense. And while he's watching, a hand comes off screen and cut to our next scene. And you know, now we see this grown man wake up. He clearly had a bad dream. And as we can see here, everything's kind of underexposed. And that, honestly, that was my mistake while I was shooting it. I thought everything was um, within a reasonable exposure but once it came in post turned out to not be the case but we can still actually work with this despite this issue right here we have across a few other shots where nothing's even matching we'll address that soon enough the first thing i want to do is i want to dial down the saturation so i can determine what i want my contrast to be because i kind of want this to feel a little dreamy what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna actually boost up the shadows a bit so it kind of has like a more like airy or wispy feel to it i'm gonna Dial up the the gain. Okay, I'm, I feel like I'm generally in the ballpark of where I want to be. I'm just going to bring the color back in. So, yeah, it's already looking kind of dreamier now. So maybe I'll add some temperature into this, kind of warm it up a bit to kind of match that sort of more warm feeling I want for the dream sequences. So for my next shot, which is, I guess, my hero shot for this second sequence here, I think I'll address this shot first. I'll probably just bring the shadows down a little bit because this is supposed to be a bit of a darker shot. He's just waking up super early in the morning. Um, but I think the thing I'm gonna focus on is the skin tone a bit, because it's kind of underexposed. So I'm just gonna boost up the midtones a bit, work with the gain a little bit more, play around with that until I feel I'm in the ballpark of where I wanna be. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to this shot here. Bring down my saturation and everything's kind of really dark. I'm not really getting much of the skin. So I'm gonna boost the highlights a bit to increase overall brightness. And I'm gonna start hitting the, the gamma here. All right, so it's looking, it's already looking a little bit better there. So bring the saturation back and I'm gonna try to cool off the image a little bit because I want things to feel like they're later in the year, like around the fall season. So things should be a little bit cooler. All right, so I'm, I'm now generally in the ballpark of where I want to be with these two general looks. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna hit the look designer button and it'll bring up this cool little interface here. And the first thing I want to do is actually address the kind of feel of this. Cause when I was thinking 
When I was thinking about the look I want for this, I, I did want it to be filmic, whether or not it was like for shots in the past or shots in the present. The first thing I'm gonna do is hit the post-processing here and go with FPE, which is like a film print emulation. Now that I've applied that, the image has already changed. Like it, it looks to my eye much more pleasing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna dial it up to make it a little stronger. And what that's gonna do is, as we see here, and I've dialed it all the way up, it feels a little more desaturated than it was before, but I think once we start applying other things to it, like negative contrast and print, it's gonna look, start looking really nice. In terms of the negative, I was thinking, what would it be like if I actually did shoot it on film? In that case, I'm actually gonna go with a stock that's optimized for daylight. So 5203 Vision 3, 50D, so that sounds about right for a daylight stock, because it was quite a bright day, so like a 50D is like a 50 ISO for daylight would be perfect. And for the contrast, I'll probably go with Kodak 2383, just to kind of match the whole Kodak sequence of things. And for the print, I'll just match 2383 again. All right, so now we kind of have a really beautiful look going on here, but maybe it's leaning a little too green for, for my taste right now. I do like how warm it is, but I might actually add in a little warmth here. And I'm gonna use some subtractive color here to remove some of the cyan. Maybe it'll kill some of that green. Okay, that's two stops too much. So I'll just add it back in a little bit. All right, it's already starting to feel almost like, a, like an old timey, like Polaroid picture or something. So I think this is good for now for this look. Maybe I'll just push it a bit up and down here. See if that changes it. Okay, I think I think this is good for here. We'll use this as our base look for the dream sequences. So what we'll call this is dream look test one. And as we save this look, we immediately see this look we just created next to a bunch of other looks I have created for this film. And the really cool part is as you create multiple looks, you can actually test out the different feelings you're getting from these different looks. So for now, I'll just stick with dream look test one for this exercise. And what I'm gonna do just to simply match it to this next shot is I'm just gonna hit the A button and Color Lab's gonna get to work. So things aren't quite matching over the first shot the way I'd like. So I'm just gonna hit enter and now I have a bunch of different, different looks that I can cycle through to see what I feel matches the best. You know, I kinda like smart but copy only also looks really good, but you know, we'll go, we'll go with smart. Okay, so now that I've basically finished this scene, I'm gonna start working on the next scene. And the really cool part is, I don't necessarily have to create a look from scratch here. I can work off the first look I created and create something that still kind of hits the feel of the first, of the first scene while going in a completely different direction. So I'm just gonna edit this look right here and I'm gonna edit a duplicate of it. So now already we're seeing that this look right now is a little not quite working for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just turn off these three and I think I'm gonna go in the direction of switching from FPE to ENR actually. So even though I'm not, I'm not doing a film print emulation, I'm still doing like a bleach bypass emulation with this and it is super strong looking right now, but we'll just keep it at one, just to kind of keep it in line with the last thing. So now that we're shooting indoors, I'm gonna change our negative to something that's more tungsten balanced. So we'll try Kodak 5219 Vision 3 500T. We'll keep 2893, and for a color print, I'm just gonna keep that the same. So it's a little too warm here, so I'm just gonna dial back everything, make it a little colder. I'm gonna add in a little just gonna cool off the shot a bit more with some cyan here. I'll exit look designer and call this um, real life test one. This looks definitely super dark, so I'm just going to popping in a little bit more light in the midtones here. And that looks pretty good to me now. That I, actually, now this looks very cool, very moody to me. Um, there are other parts that are a little hard to see, but once we get into resolve, we can. We can, we can do a little more focused work in there. Now all I wanna do is I wanna match the rest of these shots, so I'm just gonna hit A again. All right, so we're just gonna start taking a look at the rest of the shots here. Okay, yeah, skin tone's kinda, kinda looking pretty good. Let me just set the reference here. It's coming pretty close, although this shot's a little bit brighter than that, so I'll have to do them. Find other versions, just hit enter. 
And then I can cycle through these different looks until I find one that I like. All right, this is close enough here. And we just keep doing the same thing until we pretty much matched everything up. Okay, so now that we've created the two main looks for Mater Mortis and we matched all these shots, we're gonna head straight into Resolve. In order to push these out to Resolve, all we have to do is hit this button here that says Resolve Push. And it's asking me to save the project real quick. Color Lab Mater Mortis Test 1. It's gonna save that project. And now it's gonna push everything out into Resolve. The really cool thing immediately that we can see here now that it's pushed into Resolve is that I have a custom node tree that was pushed out by Color Lab. And just being able to have this immediately makes my workflow much, much faster once I'm in Resolve. And as you can see, Color Lab pushed out an IDT, which was our camera profile we worked on, pushed out a CDL, which is some of that balancing work we did. It pushed out a show lot, which is the look designer looks we created and it pushed out an ODT, which was the Rec. 709 space we were working in within Color Lab. When I got to this stage in Color Lab, I was mostly happy with the way the, the modern day shots were looking, how kind of dark and moody they were, but I felt that I could actually push the look of the dreams a little bit more. I can easily hop back into Color Lab and try to find another look and match it by a reference shot or simply just use look designer inside there again or i could easily use look designer and replace the show LUT here but what i ended up doing instead was i just went with the basic resolve tools and just messed around a bit first thing i did was just kind of mess with like tint and temperature a bit to see if i could get like a sort of really just nice like sepia tone kind of feeling here See what I could push with that. And sort of like the next major thing I end up doing within Resolve is that I start working with, uh, with Windows to reshape a lot of those shots that were underexposed and needed a lot more work than than the time they were given on set. Sometimes mistakes happen and you just have to do your best to roll with them. And in the case of this one shot here, I'm just trying my best to, to brighten it up and make it look a little nicer. Everything that has been done, done in Color Lab in terms of like the look design, in terms of shot matching, happens relatively quickly compared to this stage where I'm really just focused on, on shaping the image to look as good as possible. Normally, I'm, I'm kind of a risk-averse person when it comes to using fairly new tool sets on a project without uh, many other people having used it. And I'm really glad I took the risk with it because as a creator that does a lot of work on his own, you know, even though I work with other very, very talented people, a lot of the onus of, uh, of my own projects end up being on me. Having something that makes things a little faster and gets me away from the technical and more to the creative is always welcome. And um, using this combination of tools, I feel, has been really useful for me. A lot of this particular phase is going to be shaping the image more, going into more detail work. One of the best parts of this process is that you you basically have a second chance to to make things even even better. And you know whether it's the color or making something particular in the image pop more than it popped in the original camera image, you're giving yourself a, a chance to mold the image even more to what you want towards your own vision. So typically once I'm done shaping the image and I've denoised it, I start working in some grain. And for Mater Mortis, I actually ended up using Grain Lab for the whole film. The really lovely part about this particular tool is that it gives me control over the highlights, mids, and shadows in terms of how much grain I want in that. And this being a horror film, I want to have a good amount of grain reflect kind of the, the rough feeling of the whole film. Not just from a technical standpoint, but I feel it brings in a certain emotional feeling to, to the image that, that it wouldn't have had without kind of like a very nice organic grain. And yeah, this ends up being just the final part of shaping the image of Mater Mortis. So more or less, that's how 
I was able to use Color Lab, Look Design, and Grain Lab alongside Resolve to help me shape this film. So that's how Color Lab, Grain Lab, and Look Designer help me work faster, experiment more, and keep things creative to achieve the final look of Mater Mortis. We'll end here with a preview of the few scenes we ran through this presentation. Thank you very much and enjoy.